Nvidia has dominated the AI chip market so completely that most companies simply accepted it as an unchangeable reality. When you needed serious computational power for artificial intelligence, you bought Nvidia GPUs. There was no real alternative, no credible competition, no second option worth considering. But that monopoly just encountered its first genuine threat. And it's not coming from AMD or Intel or some scrappy startup. It's coming from a company that's been quietly building something in the shadows for nearly a decade, perfecting it in secret, testing it internally on a scale that would make most tech companies dizzy. Google just announced that Ironwood, its seventh generation tensor processing unit, will become publicly available in the coming weeks. And the specifications aren't just impressive, they're genuinely alarming if you're Nvidia. Because for the first time in years, there's a chip that can match Blackwell's raw performance while offering something Nvidia fundamentally cannot provide. Unprecedented scale and vertical integration that could reshape the entire AI infrastructure landscape. So let's break down exactly what Google just unleashed and why this matters far more than most people realize. For years, Google's tensor processing units existed in a kind of technological twilight zone. Everyone knew they existed. Google used them internally for search, translation, and their own AI products, but they were essentially invisible to the broader market. The company offered limited TPU access through Google Cloud Platform, but availability was restricted, options were scarce, and most serious AI developers stuck with NVIDIA's proven ecosystem. The prevailing wisdom was that TPUS were fine for Google's specific use cases, but couldn't compete with GPUS for general purpose AI workloads. That assessment was partially accurate for earlier TPU generations. Historically, Google's chips paled in comparison to contemporary NVIDIA GPUs in terms of raw computational power, memory capacity, and bandwidth. Google compensated for individual chip limitations by simply deploying vastly more of them, connecting hundreds or thousands of TPUs into massive computational pods. It was a brute force approach that worked for Google's internal needs, but didn't translate well to external customers who wanted flexibility and proven software ecosystems. Ironwood fundamentally changes that equation. Each individual TPU now delivers 4.6 petaflops of dense FP8 performance. To put that in perspective, that's slightly higher than NVIDIA's B200 at 4.5 petaflops, and just marginally below the 5 petaflops delivered by NVIDIA's more powerful and significantly more power-hungry GB200 and GB300 accelerators. Google's chip is now playing in the same performance league as NVIDIA's flagship products on a chip-to-chip -chip basis. Feeding that computational power is 192 gigabytes of HBM 3E memory, delivering 7.4 terabytes per second of bandwidth. Again, this puts Ironwood in the same ballpark as NVIDIA's B200, which features 192 gigabytes of HBM and 8 terabytes per second of memory bandwidth. For chip-to-chip -chip communication, each TPU features four ICI links, providing 9.6 terabits per second of aggregate bidirectional bandwidth. NVIDIA's equivalent interconnect on the B200 and B300 delivers 14.4 terabits per second, so there's still an advantage there for NVIDIA, but the gap has narrowed dramatically. Put simply, Ironwood is Google's most capable TPU ever, delivering performance 10 times greater than its TPU V5P, four times better than its TPU V6E Trillium accelerators unveiled last year, and roughly matching the capabilities of NVIDIA and AMD's latest chips. But individual chip performance, while important, tells only half the story. The real game changer is how Google scales these chips into truly monstrous computational domains. NVIDIA's NVL72 rack systems connect 72 of its latest Blackwell accelerators into a single compute domain using proprietary NVLink interconnect technology. AMD will implement something similar with its Helios racks and the MI450 series next year. Those are impressive engineering achievements representing the cutting edge of what's possible with traditional GPU architecture. But Ironwood operates on an entirely different scale that makes those systems look almost quaint by comparison. Google offers Ironwood and pods starting at 256 chips on the low end and scaling up to 9,216 chips on the high end. 
that's not a typo. Over 9,000 individual chips functioning as a single unified compute domain. And if that still isn't sufficient for your computational needs, users with deep enough pockets can scale out to multiple pods. Google's Jupyter Data Center network technology could theoretically support compute clusters containing up to 43 TPU V7 pods, which translates to roughly 400,000 accelerators operating in concert. Now, it's important to note that while the infrastructure supports that scale, it's unclear exactly how large Google's deployed TPU V7 clusters will be in actual practice. But even if real-world deployments are a fraction of the theoretical maximum, we're still talking about computational fabrics orders of magnitude larger than anything available with traditional GPU-based systems. And that scale matters enormously for training and serving the largest frontier AI models. To be fair, compute clusters containing hundreds of thousands of NVIDIA GPUs absolutely do exist and have become increasingly common as AI companies race to build larger models. The critical difference is that until the Blackwell generation these massive clusters were built using 8-way GPU boxes arranged in sprawling scale-out architectures. NVIDIA's NVL72 increased the basic unit of compute by a factor of 9, which is impressive, but still falls dramatically short of Google's TPU pod approach. Google's approach to building these massive scale-up compute fabrics differs fundamentally from NVIDIA's architectural philosophy. Where NVIDIA has opted for large, relatively flat switch topologies for its rack scale platforms, Google employs a three-dimensional torus topology where each chip connects to others in a three-dimensional mesh network. This topology eliminates the need for high-performance packet switches, which are expensive, power-hungry, and under heavy load can introduce unwanted latency that degrades performance. While the torus architecture eliminates switch latency, the mesh topology means more network hops may be required for any one chip to communicate with another. As the torus grows larger, the potential for chip-to-chip -chip latency increases. By using switches, NVIDIA and AMD ensure their GPUs are at most two hops away from any other chip in the domain. Which approach is better depends entirely on the specific workload. Some AI tasks benefit enormously from the large multi-hop topologies used in Google's TPU pods, while others perform better on the smaller switched compute domains provided by NVIDIA and AMD's rack designs. Because different workloads have different optimal architectures, Architectures. Google employs optical circuit switches that allow it to dynamically reconfigure TPU pods into various shapes and sizes to better suit specific internal and customer workloads. Rather than traditional packet switches, Google uses optical circuit switching technology that's more analogous to old telephone switchboards. These OCS appliances use various methods, including MEMS devices, to physically patch one TPU to another. Because this connection is made through an actual physical process connecting ports, it introduces minimal latency. As an added benefit, optical circuit switching helps enormously with fault tolerance. If a TPU fails mid-computation, the OCS appliances can immediately drop it from the mesh and replace it with a working chip without disrupting the entire pod. This kind of resilience becomes critically important when you're operating computational fabrics containing thousands of chips where individual component failures are statistically inevitable. Google has been using two-dimensional and three-dimensional torus architectures in conjunction with optical circuit switching in its TPU pods since at least 2021 when TPU V4 made its debut. The company is no stranger to operating massive compute fabrics in production environments. TPU V4 supported pods up to 4,096 chips in size, while TPU V5P more than doubled that to 8,960. So the jump to 9,216 chip pods with Ironwood shouldn't represent a significant technical stretch for Google to successfully deploy. The availability of these massive compute domains has already caught the attention of major AI model builders, including those for whom Google's Gemini models are direct competitors. Anthropic is among Google's largest TPU customers, having announced plans to utilize up to 1 million TPUs to train and serve its next generation of Claude models. Think about that for a moment. One of Google's biggest competitors in the AI assistant space is choosing to build on Google's infrastructure rather than NVIDIA's. Anthropic's embrace of Google's TPU technology 
isn't particularly surprising when you consider that the company is also deploying its workloads across hundreds of thousands of Amazon's Trainium 2 accelerators under Project Rainier, which similarly utilize two-dimensional and three-dimensional torus mesh topologies in their compute fabrics. The pattern suggests that for certain types of large-scale AI workloads, particularly inference serving for massive context windows, these alternative architectures offer genuine advantages over traditional GPU-based systems. While NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang has publicly downplayed the competitive threat of AI-specific ASICs to his GPU empire, it's becoming increasingly difficult to ignore that chips from companies like Google and Amazon are catching up rapidly in terms of hardware capabilities and network scalability and increasingly, software compatibility and ecosystem maturity are becoming the deciding factors rather than raw hardware specifications. Perhaps this is why financial analysts keep bringing up the competitive threat from custom silicon quarter after quarter during Nvidia's earnings calls, despite reassurances from leadership. Google reported third quarter cloud revenue of $15.15 billion, representing a 34% increase from the same period the previous year. That growth rate trails both Microsoft Azure at 40% growth and Amazon Web Services at 20%, but the gap is narrowing. Google stated it has signed more billion-dollar cloud deals in the first nine months of 2025 than in the previous two years combined. To meet surging demand, Google increased the high end of its capital spending forecast for the year to $93 billion from $85 billion. CEO Sundar Pichai explicitly stated on the earnings call that the company is seeing substantial demand for AI infrastructure products, including both TPU-based and GPU-based solutions, and that this demand is one of the key drivers of growth. The message is clear. Google is betting big that custom silicon will be a differentiating factor in the AI infrastructure race, and they're investing accordingly. The real competitive advantage for Google isn't just the chips themselves, it's the vertical integration. Google controls the entire stack from silicon design to data center networking to the software frameworks to the AI models running on top. That integration allows optimization at every level in ways that NVIDIA's customers, who are assembling systems from multiple vendors, simply cannot match. Google can serve AI inference at significantly lower cost than competitors who are renting NVIDIA GPUs, and that cost advantage compounds over time as workloads scale. The AI chip landscape just became dramatically more competitive. NVIDIA still holds enormous advantages in software ecosystem maturity, developer familiarity, and broad market availability. But for the first time in years, there's a credible alternative that matches performance specifications while offering unprecedented scale and potentially superior economics for certain workloads. That's it for today, folks. See you in the next video.